Good morning, everyone. And welcome to the 2024 Eradicate Hate Global Summit. My name is Mark Nordenberg. I'm a former chancellor of the University of Pittsburgh and privileged to be a co-chair of this summit. Uh, standing here this morning, uh, looking out into your faces uh, and knowing how committed and accomplished the members of this group are uh, fills me with a sense of pride just to be in your company. But it is thinking about how much more we all can accomplish together that provides an even deeper sense of satisfaction. We've come a long way since we first convened in the fall of 2021. Many of you have made important contributions to our progress since then, and I thank you all for that. Uh, in fact, the successes that we have enjoyed have been built on thousands of contributions made by hundreds of different people, many of whom are in the room this morning. Still, I feel quite certain that there is only one person who in the immediate aftermath of the deadly attack at the Tree of Life Synagogue in 2018, uh, had a clear sense of where we would be in 2024. Uh, and that is Laura Ellsworth, the partner in charge of global community service initiatives for the international law firm Jones Day uh, and a founding co-chair of the summit. Laura has been a visionary leader, uh, a consummate bridge builder, and a skilled problem solver. And none of you who know her will be surprised when I say that none of the challenges that we have met along the way have intimidated her in the least bit. Uh, Laura really has been our not so secret uh, indispensable ingredient in our formula for success. Uh, and I can't think of a better way to kick off this summit uh, than with an early morning round of applause for the true founder, Laura Ellsworth. As we built with your help, something of ever-growing value. Laura and I knew that to protect and grow the summit, we also needed to build a sustainable infrastructure and add talent to the Eradicate Hate team. Uh, a huge opportunity to do both emerged when Chuck Molenberg, uh, a recently retired Jones Day partner, uh, offered to serve on a pro bono basis first as the summit's president and now as its chief administrative officer. Uh, we really don't know what we would have done without Chuck. Then last spring, we seized an almost unbelievable opportunity when we were able to bring Brett Steele and her talented preventing targeted violence team from the McCain Institute to the summit with Brett assuming the role of president. Uh, our board's decision to move in this direction was really grounded in uh, absolutely uh, unmistakable logic. One of the few things that could be better than having one superwoman as a leader would be to have two superwomen as leaders, and now we have both. Uh, Laura Ellsworth, superwoman number one, and Brett Steele, superwoman number two. So let me again say thanks for being here. Thanks for all you have done to advance this noble cause, and I'll get out of the way. Uh, and let these super women take the podium. Uh, 
Uh, welcome, everybody. It is every year such an incredible joy to see so many of you here uh, engaging with us in this work. And this year, I see so many faces of people who we are engaging with, not just annually at the summit, but um, continually through the year. It is a real honor to have you all here. Let me do a really quick show of hands. Um, how many of you have been to the summit before? How many of you are at the summit today for the first time? OK, thank you. Um, you know, Mark was kind enough to say that um, I am a member of a law firm called Jones Day. And our managing partner once said to us, when we were in a room like this and I was in the audience, if you want to measure your value to this institution, you have to ask yourself only one question. And that question is, who is here because of me? And I hadn't guessed that while I was sitting in the audience wondering what the answer to that question was. But what I understood when he said that is that every individual is powerful. And part of what the summit stands for is that every individual, no matter who you are, how old you are, where you live, what you do for a living, you have power to make a difference on these issues. You have a power to forge solutions to this intractable problem of hate. But we also know that as fabulous as the power of one can be, the real power is the ability to bring talented people together to solve problems together. Because every solution is better when we reach it together. And so all of you are here, I suspect, because someone else has encouraged you, invited you, told you to come. And so the one thing I ask you to do, you are our power. You are the people who understand this. And I think you will agree with me when I say, if you haven't lived Eradicate Hate, you don't really understand it from the inside out. Those of you who are going to leave here will understand Eradicate Hate, and we ask you to help us spread that word to help us exercise that power to be the person who brings the next talented person to eradicate hate. The first person I reached out to, of course, um, was Mark Nordenberg. And he has been just an unbelievable treasure to this organization and to me personally, because this was not an easy thing to build. This doesn't exist anywhere else. And it has just been an unbelievable joy to be able to work with him. And last year, we were proud to announce to you that we had become a standalone 501c3 organization. And this year, we are absolutely thrilled to be able to report to you that we have now a full-time, professional, world-class staff. And the people who are here, the next generation, the future of the summit, um, are just extraordinary people. And we are so thrilled for you to begin to work with them here. Many of you have worked with them for a long time. We are incredibly blessed to have them as a part of Eradicate Hate, and it is my great privilege to introduce you to our new president, Brett Steele. I'm going to get very used to adjusting the microphone down this week. Hello, everyone. As Mark said, welcome to the fourth annual Eradicate Hate Global Summit. We are so thrilled to have you here. Mark and Laura gave you a bit of the history in the immediate aftermath of the massacre that occurred at the Tree of Life Synagogue. This moment we're in today, think about our moment in time. Two weeks ago, we had the anniversary of October 7th and the ensuing conflict between Israel and Hamas. And all of the anti-Semitism and Islamophobia that we've seen in the aftermath of those events. This week is the anniversary of the attack at the Tree of Life Synagogue. And two weeks from now, in the United States, we have a presidential election that has been fraught with political violence. We at the Eradicate Hate Global Summit are here to meet this moment. We need all of your help to do it. 
Um, this summit is about hope. This summit is about finding concrete solutions to these intractable problems. The magic of the summit is not just what you sit in this room and learn, but it's who you meet. It's the programs you discover that you decide to take back and implement. And it's the collaborations you foster based on the conversations here at the summit. We want our impact to be year round. And we want our partnerships with all of you to be year round as well. Later in the morning, we'll have a session called the Summit Responds where you'll understand the full suite of year round programs we now have at Eradicate Hate. But let me start by saying, please approach these conversations thinking about what can I do with what I'm learning? Who can I work with to take my work to the next level? And what is my role in preventing hate-fueled violence and being part of the solution? I, it is my pleasure to introduce our multi-faith leaders uh, to come to the stage for our multi-faith invocation. Good morning, my name is uh, Salim Gubriel. I was born in Beirut, Lebanon, raised in southern Lebanon in the city of Sidon. My family fled during the Lebanese Civil War when I was 16 years old in 1976 and came to the first place immigrants come to when they come to the United States, uh, Iowa. And um, <laughs> got thrown out of the first high school and the first college that I attended in Iowa and now I uh, run a scholarship fund in Pittsburgh to send city kids to college on a scholarship. I uh, am married. I have two children, two children-in-law, five little boys who call me grandpa. I run an educational foundation. I'm a Presbyterian pastor. I'm a community leader. And all of those things contribute to various aspects of what makes me who I am and gives me the identity that I have. But all of those are fragile and they can be changed. But there's one that cannot be changed, and that is my identity as somebody who is loved, a beloved. In the Jewish Hebrew scriptures, we are told that this breath that we have, and if you don't mind, join me in taking one long, deep breath. Let's do one more. In the, Hebrews, in the Hebrew scriptures, this breath, we are told, is the breath that God breathed into the nostrils of Adam, and it's called the ruach, the spirit, the breath of God, the life of God that makes us sacred, makes everyone sacred, and makes us beloved, makes everyone beloved, including those who are a little bit harder for us to love. You are the beloved, and I hope that that becomes the foundational basis of your identity above everything else. Each one of you are special. We do hard work. We forget to take care of ourselves. Please remember all of the people and animals who are bereft of the basics, a home, food, job, security, safety, and we send all the good energy that's beginning and will continue to develop here out to them in the form of whatever they need, the basics, and then love, 
And as you send that love out to everyone, include yourself. Take a moment, find the love inside of you the best you can, and send it out and fill every living being. Please. We gather this week with the shared mission to eradicate hate. Eradicate. It comes from the Latin word radix, which means root. Our task is to pull up hatred by the roots, so I hope you packed your gardening gloves. And then, it's also our task to plant something new, something needed, something beautiful in the rich soil that is left behind. Where there is hatred, says the beloved prayer inspired by St. Francis of Assisi, where there is hatred, let us sow love. May it be so. Good morning. We, the global Jewish community, are currently celebrating the holiday of Sukkot, a week-long holiday that marks a harvest festival. In ancient times, farmers would pilgrimage to Jerusalem and the temple with their offerings, praying for peace and blessings, and sharing their harvested bounty in the spirit of celebration. Today, all of us are gathered here from very, very diverse backgrounds and communities to offer our own bounty a shared desire for learning, curiosity, and a hope for a more peaceful tomorrow. Whether we're planting new ideas or harvesting ripe ones, may we recognize that these next few days are actually a blessing, a real celebration to share with one another. So in the spirit of hope and peace and wonderful Pittsburgh hospitality, please turn to the neighbor at your table and wish each other a good morning and blessings for three wonderful days of learning.